Chapter 22 The Prisoner Having crossed the stream, Yanez led Sanakan into the middle of a dense thicket where twenty men lay in wait, all well armed and equipped with a woolen blanket and a bag of provisions. Parano and his lieutenants were there as well. Is everyone here? asked Yanez. Yes, Captain, came the reply. Listen carefully, said the Portuguese. Equat, you'll return aboard. If something happens, you'll send a man to this very spot, where he'll find someone awaiting orders. We'll also relay instructions through him. Once you receive them, execute them immediately. No exceptions. Be careful and stay alert. Don't let yourselves be fooled or surprised by the redcoats. And remember, even though we'll be a good distance from here, we can receive a message within minutes. You can count on me, Senor Yanez. Excellent. Now return to your ship and keep your eyes open. While the lieutenant made his way back to the Prahu, Yanez, having taken command of the men, began to head up the river. Where are you taking us? asked Sandokan, unable to guess the Portuguese's plan. All in good time, little brother. Before we go any further, how far would you say Lord Guianox Villa is from the sea? About two miles as the crow flies. Then we have more than enough men. To do what? Ah, a little patience, Sandokan. He got his bearings with a compass he had gotten aboard the Prahu, and headed beneath the trees, marching rapidly. After having gone four hundred meters, he stopped beneath a large camphor tree towering over a thick clump of bushes, turned to one of the pirates and said, You'll set up here. Don't leave your post for any reason until ordered to do so. The stream is only four hundred meters away. You can communicate quite easily with the Prahu. Another man will be set up four hundred meters east of here. You'll relay to him any order issued from our ship. Any questions? No, Senor Yanez. While the Malai began to build himself a small attap by the base of the giant tree, a platoon headed forward, pausing only for Yanez to station his men. Have you grasped my plan? Uh, Yanez asked Sandokan. Yes, the latter replied, and I admire your cunning. With our sentry stationed in the forest, we'll be able to stay in contact with our ship, even from Lord James's villa. Yes, Sandokan, and more importantly, We'll be able to inform Equat to send reinforcements or to ready the Prahu and set sail. What about us? Where are we going to set up camp? On the path to Victoria. We'll be able to keep an eye on movements to and from the villa and take the necessary measures to prevent his lordship from escaping. Once he decides to leave, we'll ambush him and make off with Mariana. What if his lordship decides to stay put? By Jupiter! We'll attack the villa or find another way to kidnap the young woman. Best not to be forced to such extremes, Yanez. Lord James would kill his niece before he let her fall into my hands. By the saints! He's capable of anything, my friend. Then we'll have to use a little cunning. You have an idea? We'll find one, Sanukan. I'd never forgive myself if that wretch murdered that adorable young woman. It'd be the death of the tiger of Malaysia. I wouldn't be able to survive without her. I'm well aware of that. Unfortunately, sighed Yanez, that woman has bewitched you. Cursed me, Yanez. Whoever would have thought that I, whose heart beat only for the victory of battle and the destruction of my enemies, would one day have been conquered by a young woman from the very race I vowed to fight to the death. At the very thought of it, my strength gives way and my blood begins to boil. And yet, I am unable to break this chain around my heart, Yanez. Nor will I be ever be able to forget those eyes that have bewitched me so. Let's not talk about it any more. Let fate unfold as it will. Even if it should be fatal to Montpresem, Sandokan? asked Yanez. The tiger of Malaysia dropped his eyes and fell silent. They had arrived at the outskirts of a forest. To one side lay a small field dotted with bushes, gambias, and groves of areca trees. A path ran through it. However, it appeared seldom used for parts of it had been overgrown with grass. "'Is this the path to Victoria?' asked Yanez. "'Yes,' Sandokan replied. "'Lord James's villa can't be too far from here. "'I can make out part of the wall down there, just behind those trees.' "'Great,' said Yanez. He turned to Paranoa, who had followed them with six men, and said, "'Go to the edge of the forest, find a spot surrounded by thick brush, and set up our tents.' 
The pirate set off immediately. Having found a suitable place, he had the tents erected, taking care to conceal them behind a collection of branches and banana leaves. He had all the supplies, which consisted of canned food, smoked meat, biscuits, and several bottles of Spanish wine. Put away, then sent six men off to patrol the forest to ensure no spies were lurking nearby. After having advanced to within two hundred meters of the garden wall, son of Calignanes returned to camp and stretched out beneath the main tent. "'Are you satisfied with the plan, Sandokan asked the Portuguese. "'Yes, brother,' replied the tiger of Malaysia. "'We're only a few paces from the path to Victoria. "'If his lordship decides to leave the villa, he'll be forced to pass beneath our rifles. "'We can assemble twenty determined men in less than half an hour, "'our entire crew in an hour. "'As soon as he makes his move, we'll attack.' Yes, replied Sanokan, we won't let him escape, even if we have to battle an entire regiment. Then I guess we should eat something to preserve our strength, little brother, said Yanez, laughing. Our morning stroll has left me famished. They devoured their breakfast, smoked several cigarettes, and had just opened a bottle of whiskey when Paranoa suddenly rushed into their tent. The good Malai, usually so calm and level-headed, appeared greatly excited. "'Spot something?' asked Sandokan, reaching for his rifle as he got to his feet. "'Someone's coming, Captain,' replied Paranoa. "'I heard a horse approaching. "'Could it be a soldier heading for Victoria?' "'No, Tiger of Malaysia. It's coming from Victoria.' "'Is he still far off?' asked Yanez. "'I think so. Come, Sandokan.' They gathered their weapons and headed outside, while their men hid among the bushes and quickly readied their rifles. Sandokan headed towards the path dropped to his knees, put an ear to the ground, and heard the distinct sound of galloping hooves. "'Yes, someone's riding towards us,' he said, getting up swiftly. "'I recommend we let him pass,' said Yanez. "'We're going to take him prisoner, my friend.' "'What? Why? He could be taking an important message to the villa. If we attack him, he'll defend himself, he'll fire his musket, and the blast will be heard by the soldiers in the villa. We'll capture him before he can draw his weapons.' It'll be difficult, Sandokan. It'll be easier than you think. Care to tell me how? The horse is advancing at a gallop. It won't be able to avoid an obstacle. The rider will be thrown off and he'll fall into our hands. What kind of obstacle? Paranoa. Get me a long vine. Ah, yes, perfect, said the Portuguese. What an excellent idea. Yes, let's capture him, Sandokan. By Jupiter, we can definitely make use of him. I can't believe I didn't think of it before. What are you talking about, Yanez? You'll find out later. What an excellent little ruse. You're laughing? And with good reason. You'll see, Sandokan. Oh, how we're going to trick his lordship. Paranoa, ready the vine. Hurry! Assisted by two men, the Malai laid a solid vine across the path, keeping it low to the ground, hidden by the tall grass. Once it was in place, he hid behind a bush and drew his criss while the remainder of the tigers spread out farther up the path to prevent the rider from fleeing, if by chance he managed to escape the trap. The horse was rapidly approaching. It would not be long before it came within sight. "'There he is,' murmured Sandokan, who had hit beside Yanez. A few moments later, a horse jumped over a bush and came galloping up the path. A handsome young man, clad in a sepoy's uniform, sat in the saddle. He could not have been more than twenty-two or twenty-three years of age. Eyes darting nervously all over the place, he kept spurring his horse, anxious to reach the safety of the villa. "'Stand ready, Yanez,' murmured Sandokan. Spurred on by its rider, the horse raced forward, rapidly moving towards the vine. Then, without warning, it fell heavily to the ground, its legs twitching. The pirates attacked in a flash. Before the rider could move, Sandokan had relieved him of his sword while Paranoa pinned him to the ground and pointed a criss at his chest. "'Don't move! Surrender, and we'll spare your life!' yelled Sandokan. "'Wretches!' exclaimed the soldier, attempting to twist himself free. With the assistance of a few pirates, Paranoa bound him securely and dragged him towards the bushes, as Yanez carefully examined the horse, fearing the poor animal had broken a leg when it fell. "'By Jupiter!' exclaimed the good Portuguese, bursting with happiness. I'll cut a fine figure at the villa. Yanez de Gomera, sergeant of the sepoys. Never thought I'd see stripes on my sleeves. 
He tethered the animal to a tree and went to join Sanokat, who was searching through the sergeant's pockets. Find anything? he asked. Not so much as a scrap of paper, replied Sanokat. He'll talk, said Yanez, fixing his eyes on the young man. No, the prisoner replied. Careful, replied Sanokat in a tone that would have made even the toughest person trembled. Where were you heading? I was out for a ride. Ah, is that so? The tiger of Malaysia drew his chris and put it to the soldier's throat. Talk, or I'll kill you, he thundered. N no, replied the t soldier. Talk, replied Sandokan, pushing in the blade. The prisoner howled in pain as the chris pierced his skin and bathed the blade in blood. I'll talk, stammered the sepoy, having turned pale as a corpse. Where were you going? asked Sandokan. To see Lord James Guianoc. For what reason? The soldier hesitated, but, upon seeing the pirate draw his chris a second time, continued, to deliver a letter from Aaron Rosenthal. Anger flashed in Sanokan's eyes. Give me that letter, he exclaimed hoarsely. It's in my hat, beneath the lining. Yanez picked up the soldier's hat, ripped open the lining, pulled out the letter, and immediately unfolded it. What does that dog of a baron write? asked Sanokan. He's warning his lordship of our imminent arrival in Labuan. He says that a cruiser spotted one of our ships heading towards these shores, and that he should keep his soldiers on guard. Nothing else? Oh, yes, by Jupiter. He sends a thousand respectful salutations to your Mariana, and pledges his undying love. May God curse that wretch. I'll give him a thousand salutations if I ever run into him. Paranoa, said the Portuguese, carefully examining the letter. Send a man to the Prahu, and have him bring me some paper, a pen, and some ink. What do you plan to do with those things? asked Sandokan. They're needed for my latest plan. And what plan would that be? The one I've been formulating for the last half hour. Are you going to take that secret to the grave? Well, I'll tell you since you're so obsessed with it. I'm about to go to Lord James's villa. You're what? That's right, replied Yanez, as calmly as if he were discussing the weather. How exactly? Disguised as that sepoy? By Jupiter, what a handsome soldier I'll make. I'm beginning to understand. You're going to wear the sepoy's uniform and pretend to come from Victoria, and I'll advise his lordship to leave and lead him right into the trap you're going to set for him here. Ah, Yanez! exclaimed Sandokan, embracing his friend. Calm down, little brother. Careful you don't break one of my arms. I'll owe you the world if you succeed. You'll be running a great risk, though. Bah! I'll get out of it with honour and without coming to any harm. But why the ink? To write a letter to his lordship. I'd advise against it, Yanez. He's a suspicious man. If he notices that the writing doesn't match the baron's, he could have you shot. You're right, Sanokan. It'd be better to tell him. Now, have them undress the sepoy. At a sign from Sanokan, two pirates untied the soldier and relieved him of his uniform. The poor man thought his time had come. Are you going to kill me? He asked Sanokan. No, the pirate replied. Your death would not serve me in any way. I'll spare your life, but you'll remain a prisoner for aboard my prahu for as long as we remain on this island. Thank you, sir. In the meantime, Yanez had gotten dressed. The uniform was a little tight, but it would easily serve its purpose. Look, little brother, don't I make a handsome soldier? He asked, strapping on his sword. Even I didn't think I'd look this good. Yes, you truly are a handsome sepoy, Sandokan replied, laughing. Any last instructions? Summon the remainder of our men and stay hidden along this path, said the Portuguese. I'll visit his lordship, tell him your troops were attacked and scattered, but that other prahus have been spotted advancing towards Labuan. I'll convince him to take advantage of this favourable moment and seek refuge in Victoria. Perfect! When we pass, you'll attack the convoy. I'll grab Mariana and take her to the Prahu. Are we agreed? Yes. Go, my brave friend. Tell Mariana I love her, and to have faith in me. Go, and may God protect you. Goodbye, little brother, replied Yanez, embracing his friend one last time. He mounted the sepoy's horse, grabbed the reins, unseed his sword, and left at a gallop, whistling an old tune.